I think that one of the biggest forms of self-sabotage is not asking for what you want and just accepting whatever it is that you get. I think for those of us who expect to hear no all the time, we stop asking for the things we want. We just assume we're not gonna get them, so we stop asking. And instead we accept whatever is thrown at us, whatever crumbs we can get, or whatever unaligned people or things that we encounter. We accept that because we we haven't asked for the things we want because we don't expect to get those things. So we just deal with whatever it is that shows up and try to make that work. Of course, though, anything that is unaligned for you or is not truly satisfying for you is not going to work, no matter how much you tell yourself. Now, of course, there are things in life where, like, you can't control everything in life, right? You're going to get things that are not perfect. Of course, nothing is perfect. But you're going to get things that are good enough. And that's okay, too. You are also good enough. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to be ideal or idealistic. Things can just be good enough. That's totally valid and totally fine. But I also think that many of us hold ourselves back from asking for what we genuinely want because we expect to hear no. And instead, what happens is we still desire those things, but end up with things that are less satisfying to us. And we try to convince ourselves that they're good enough when they're not. And it's okay to acknowledge and accept that this is not what you want, that you want something more or different or whatever that's okay but the key here is the vulnerability of asking for what you want and believing that you can get a yes and that's the toughest part if you were conditioned throughout your life to assume that you're going to hear no you know maybe you had parents or caregivers who always told you no or who made you believe that you and and they were You're just the kind of people that don't get what you want. And so now that's a deep-seated belief that you carry with you. You're not the kind of person that gets what they want. So there's no point even asking. It now becomes so much harder to even believe you can hear a yes. So of course you're not going to ask. Because asking A could be a waste of time. And B shows a vulnerability. Shows a lack of something. And sometimes to show others that we lack in something. That we need something or want something can be kind of threatening. It can be scary. So all of this is understandable. This isn't to shame anybody for this. I think it's a very human experience. I think some of us were conditioned way more than others to believe that no is the only answer we'll ever get. And that is so sad to live life as our inner children, right? Because this is our inner child at the forefront. Our inner child who does not expect to hear yes for anything that they like or want or desire. And that's who's governing your life now is that version of you, the version of you that does not expect to hear yes to anything, making decisions, getting into relationships, finding jobs without the ability or, you know, bravery to ask for what they want because they don't believe they can get it. And I think ultimately, yeah, you're going to hear no in your life. Of course you are. We all are. The no is not a reflection of your worth and your value. That's the key distinction here. It's something that I've had to learn throughout the years. I'm still having to learn it over and over again. It's easy to forget, of course. When you hear a no from somebody, and the no doesn't have to be like an outright no. It could be just like, a, you know, you start talking to somebody and the conversation doesn't flow and then you fall, you drift apart and it, you know, it doesn't work out. That's a no, right? That's like a a universal no in a sense. But it could be a straightforward no. It can just, it could be a job rejection, whatever. When you hear a no, the no is not a reflection of your worth. That is so important to really understand and internalize. The no has nothing to do with whether you're worthy of a yes. The no is just a no. There's, it's, a, it's neutral. Obviously, there are things that we need as humans to survive and feel safe. So yes, when you hear a no to something like that, it's terrifying. It's very uncomfortable. And sometimes you do have to settle for things that just provide you what you need in that moment to be okay. Totally valid. Again, though, it's not tied to your worth as a person at all. Often what it signifies is that the yes you're looking for is not here. It's not going to be found here in this circumstance with this person or whatever. It has nothing to do with your worth of whether you're you're worthy to get a yes. It's just that the yes is not here. The yes is somewhere else. 
And your job now as your parent, in a sense, your new parent, the parent to your inner child, is to go out and find the place where that yes is. And the only way to really find that place is to ask, is to ask the question. The only way to ask the question is to believe that there is a possibility for a yes. Now, obviously this is difficult because how do you believe that there's a possibility for a yes if you've never experienced it before? Sometimes you have to go in almost with blind faith in order to get a yes and use that as, as a piece of evidence, a building block to that new belief. Sometimes it just takes one, one small moment to reprogram everything you've thought your whole life about yourself. You have to give yourself the opportunity to get that evidence. That I think, again, just from my own opinion, of course, this is just stuff I've learned in therapy. I'm not a therapist. But that, doing that, going out of your way, putting yourself in positions and situations where you can hear a yes to build those those blocks of evidence for your self-worth and your belief in yourself, that is what self-love is. That's how you practice self-love. It's one way of practicing self-love. There are, there's a plethora of ways to practice self-love, but that's one of them. That is self-love. You are showing yourself that you love yourself enough to, to do the scary, uncomfortable, brave thing of asking for what you want and having the belief that you're going to get a yes. And if you don't get a yes, it's not about you. It's just the circumstance and you'll find a yes somewhere else. You just have to keep asking until you get it. And it's going to be painful and there's probably gonna be a lot of rejection and you're gonna have to be very resilient and you're gonna have to wait but like to do that to stick with that that is self-love because you're not gonna rest until you show yourself your inner child that you are worthy of a yes until you get that yes obviously this doesn't mean you should be forcing a yes out of a person or a circumstance obviously you know respect a no and understand again that okay the no is I'm not, it's not meant for me here. This is not where it is for me. It's somewhere else. So how do we realign? How do we pivot? What direction do we move in now? Where am I feeling cold to more? That is how you show yourself that you love yourself, putting yourself in those positions. I know this seems almost kind of abstract. Again, this comes with a lot of um, self-awareness work uh, in therapy and just the things I've had to kind of explore within myself. So it's not something that you kind of like learn and understand and implement overnight. I'm just trying to plant that seed for you if you struggle with this. It's so, so, so vital to ask for the things you want. And asking, again, doesn't it doesn't have to be like a blatant outright asking of, can I have this? Will you give me this? It, asking can be shown and expressed in a variety of ways. Um, asking could be as simple as holding somebody's hand and receiving something back from that, like a, a, a someone, you know, engaging in that with you, whatever. It could be anything. It doesn't even have to be something physical, right? Because obviously we want to respect people's physical boundaries as well. But it can be something like that. That's that is a, an invitation, an asking, a question of, yes, do you like this? Is this something you would like? <laughs> it can, again, it can be expressed in a variety of ways. It's just about you being open to seeing those different ways and asking in those different ways. It could be a, a like an outright question, totally. That, there's nothing wrong with that. And that's maybe the most vulnerable way of doing it. The most vulnerable way of asking for what you want is just asking. Uh, it's also the most liberating way too, because you don't have to read signs or you don't have to like try and decipher things or tiptoe around things. You can just ask and you get an answer and then you can keep it pushing, right? But there's, there's so many different ways. Um, so yeah, it's, it's important to put yourself in positions and do the brave thing of asking. And sometimes that means having to believe that you will receive a yes at some point, even though you've never seen it this far. And that ties into, of course, self-concept work. Changing your self-concept to believe that you are a person that deserves a yes, right? Like you are worthy of a yes. You might, even if you don't get a yes, in this lifetime, let's say, as a thought experiment, maybe the worst case scenario, you never get a yes for anything that you want. Just the fact that you're willing to ask shows you subconsciously, it tells you that you believe you are worthy of it. That is so powerful. Just having that belief in your own self-worth, whether or not the external world reflects it to you. Obviously, you know, we ideally would have the external world <laughs> reflected to it at some point or in some way. I'm just using like the worst case scenario here, the most extreme possibility here. But to 
to show yourself that you believe you're worthy of it just by simply asking. It, it doesn't hurt as much as if you were never to ask, right? It would hurt more to never ask, to never put yourself in those positions, to never believe that you are worthy of a yes than it would be to never get a yes, but to at least put yourself in those positions to ask, you know? And again, there's nuance to this. Everybody's experience is different and valid. And obviously like rejection is not fun and, and enjoyable and to never get what you want in life, even if you're asking, of course, is so painful. So I'm not trying to disregard that experience by any means. I just mean that as somebody who also has a hard time asking for what I want or believing that I'm going to get a yes, I've had to really practice it. And the more I've practiced it, even if I haven't gotten a yes in things, I've felt better simply because I've asked for it. And that's it. Like that's the bare minimum you can do for yourself as an act of self-love and self-care. That's it. Just, just asking and not taking it personally if you get a no. Not seeing it as a reflection of your worth. Just seeing it as an unaligned place, an un unaligned circumstance. So the yes will be somewhere else. You just have to ask somebody else or some something else. So yeah, like I know it's easier said than done, of course. But start small. Start with small things that you can ask for. Whatever that might be for you. It might be a question you have to yourself, right? Giving yourself permission to do something. That yes might be the first yes you need to feel confident to ask for other things from other people or other circumstances. So yeah, I hope this was helpful. I hope it was informative. If you want to talk about these things in more detail with me, you can book a one-to-one -one call over on my website. Um, again, as I always say, I'm not a therapist. I just I love talking about these things and I spend a lot of time exploring them within myself. So hopefully everything I talk about resonates with you. And if it does, you can have a call with me. We can talk about it in more detail. Um, you can feel free to subscribe to my Substack where I write about topics like these and also follow me on Instagram and TikTok for the rest of my content. Other than that, thank you for listening and I'll be back again soon with another episode.